Welcome to homework set number 12 for ECE 111. This homework set deals with random processes and statistics, one of the courses required to take before you graduate from NDSU. Now the first problem looks at a chi-square test and a die roll. If you take this code and run it, simple right here, what this does is rand generates a random number between 0 and 1, 6 times rand gives a number between 0 and 6, uh, round up gives an integer between 1 and 6. That's your die roll. Uh, result just keeps track. If I roll a 3, I'll increment result of 3 by 1, 5 of 1. So result eventually contains how many times I rolled a 1, 2, 3, and so on. Every time I run this code, I get a different answer. So this corresponds to the number of 1s, 2s, 3s, 4s, 5s, and 6s. That's very common in lab. In labs, when you run an experiment, every time you run the experiment, I'm going to get a different answer. That's a random process where you need statistics to analyze it. And this is an example of one of them. I've got 60 six-sided dice. Is that a fair die? To solve that, I use chi-square test. The first approach is roll the dice 60 times. Get your numbers. Here's what I got. Now compute the chi-squared score. To do that, what I do is I take the expected frequency. If I have 60 dice, the probability of each number is 1 and 6, so I should get 10 1s, 10 2s, 10 3s. This is how many I got. Take the difference in the two, squared, divided by 10. Difference in these two squared, divided by 10. Difference in these two squared, and so on. Gives the chi-squared score. Add them all up, I get 4. To convert that to a probability, I use a chi-squared table or a stat track. Uh, StatTrack is a really useful website. It's StatTrack.com. Uh, kind of the statistician's playground. In this case, I have six bins, meaning five degrees of freedom. My chi-squared score is a four. When I hit solve, it converts it to probability. Probability is 0.45. The bigger the number is, the higher the probability. Uh, what this means is there's a 45% chance that this is not a fair die. 45% chance of rejecting the null hypothesis, meaning that it's fair. And you're going to get different answers depending upon what numbers you came up. But it's typically, you know, between like 10% and 90%. That usually means no conclusion. Uh, problem two. Suppose I have a loaded die. What this does is 20% of the time I roll a six. The rest of the time the die is fair. What that looks like, if I go into MATLAB, here's problem two. 60% of the time I roll a two, roll a six, all the rest is fair. Uh, roll the dice, kind of see I'm getting too many sixes. Keep doing it, I get different numbers. There's a 29, 23, you know, different answers each time. Can I detect that the die is loaded with only 60 die rolls? So again, it's the same procedure. You roll the dice, and you get numbers. This is what I got. Then again, set up a chi-squared table. Here's the difference squared divided by 10. Difference squared divided by 10. Add them all up. I get 13.8. To convert that to a probability, again, you go back to stat track. If I have six bins, meaning five degrees of freedom, my chi-squared score is 13.8. The probability is 0.98. That says there's a 98% chance this is not a fair die. The data is not consistent with my distribution. So again, that's kind of one way to pick up a loaded die. If you load it too much, you can tell. If I wasn't quite so greedy and only let it about 10%, I'd have a real hard time of uh, detecting that it's a loaded die. Problem three determines whether or not you're psychic. So here you take a deck of playing cards, shuffle them, and guess what the first card is, like a heart. Flip it over and see if you're right. Take the second card, guess what it is, spade. Flip it over, see if you're right. Repeat as you go through the deck. Keep track of how many times you're right, how many times you're wrong. Uh, for me, when I tried it, I was right 19 times, wrong 33 times. So, am I psychic? Or am I just getting? Well, again, this is a chi-squared uh, test. What I do is I've got my two bins, correct and incorrect. The probability of being right is 1 and 4. Incorrect is 3 and 4. My expected frequency is 13 and 39. Here's what I got. 
to get the chi-squared score. Take the difference squared, that's 36 over 13, is 2.77. Difference squared over 39, 36 over 39 is 0.92. Add them all up, I get 0.369. Converting that to a probability, again, it's a chi-squared uh, table. I've got two bins, meaning one degree freedom. My chi-squared chi score is 3.69, giving me 0.95. So based upon this experiment, there's a 95% chance that I'm not just guessing. I really am psychic, which I'm kind of excited about. Um, actually, I ran this test a couple more times, and it came up with no conclusion. A couple times, I actually got worse than average. So 95% chance I wasn't guessing. There is a chance they got lucky. Um, I actually probably just got lucky on this one. So I'm not willing to mortgage the house and go, go to the casinos yet, but that's a chi-squared uh, test with determining if you're psychic. Um, if you did turn out that you're psychic, uh, you might run a couple more tests. And if you really are, yeah, maybe yeah, try your luck at the casino. Maybe not. Um, anyway, going on to the next problem. Problem four. This is a different test, a normal approximation. From the central limit theorem, once you have a normal distribution, uh, normal distribution is your bell-shaped curve you're probably all familiar with. Central limit theorem says, under some very broad assumptions, all distributions converge to a normal. And once you have a normal distribution, a normal plus a normal is a normal, where the mean adds and the variance adds. Uh, the variance is the square of the standard deviation. So if I have a six-sided die, here's the mean and the standard deviation. This is the mean and standard deviation for a four-sided die. That you can calculate. What is the distribution of three six-sided dice plus four four-sided dice. Now, when you take random processes, you can calculate that. With a normal approximation, I can do a pretty good job approximating it with the normal distribution. When I add up these numbers, the mean will add. So it'll be the mean of a six-sided die times three, because there's three of them, plus the mean of a four-sided die times four, because there's four of them. The total is 20.5. So in this distribution, I expect, when I add them all up, the mean, the center of it, will be 20.5. To get the spread, the spread is standard deviation. It isn't the standard deviation that adds, it's the variance, the square of the standard deviation. So I take the variance of a six-sided die times three, because there's three of them, variance of a four-sided die times four, because there's four of them, add them all up, I get 13.7, take the square root, 3.7. So this is what the distribution looks like. One standard deviation is about 3.7. So this would be minus 3.7, minus 7.4, uh, plus 3.7, plus 7.4. That's what the distribution looks like for rolling these dice. I can plot that in MATLAB. The PDF probability density function for a normal distribution is e to the minus s squared over 2. That's for standard normal. I'm going from minus 4 standard deviations to plus 4. I'm going to plot it scaled by the standard deviation, shifted by the mean. So here's what the sum of the dice looks like. The mean is at 20.5, and the spread is about 3.7. So right about here is one standard deviation. Right about here is two standard deviations. That distance is 3.7. And plus 1, plus 2. Um, so I'm going to roll numbers between about 10 and 30. Using that, I can determine the 90% confidence interval. So I want to know where is this area 0.9, meaning the left tail is 0.05, the right tail is 0.05. And this kind of is what causes a lot of confusion. For a 90% confidence interval, it's 5% tails. The reason being is there's two tails, so it's the 10% divided by 2 for each tail leaving 90% in the middle. If you go to stat track or a normal distribution, 5% tails corresponds to 1.645 standard deviations. So this distance is plus 1.645 standard deviations, and this distance is minus 1.645 standard deviations. That's your z-score that corresponds to 5% tails. Plugging in the mean and the standard deviation, that means 90% of the time, General numbers between 14.4 and 26.6. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. What's the probability that the sum will be more than 24.5? Use a different color. So again, 24.5 is right about here. I want to know what is this area. To determine that, again, what I do is I find how far is that from the mean in terms of standard deviations. That's your z-score. Uh, very similar to a t-score, but for a t-distribution, when I... Oh, never mind. Um, the z-score is distance to the mean. It's this distance in terms of standard deviations. This is 1.07 standard deviations. From a normal distribution or a stat track, if I have a normal distribution, my z-score is 1.07. The area to the left is 0.14. And so it's either going to be this area or this area. This area right here is actually 0.14. This is kind of why I kind of like drawing it out. All probabilities add to 1. So this area over here on the left is 0.86. 86% chance I'll roll less than 24.5. 14% chance I'll roll more than 24.5. And that's what it looks like. I can check my answer using a Monte Carlo simulation. What this does is this rolls the dice a million times and kind of illustrating that. This is problem five. I'm only going to do it 100,000 times because it takes a long time. Clear the screen. If I run this, I roll the dice 100,000 times. Of the 100,000 times, 14.32% of the time, I rolled a number bigger than 24.5. And now every time I do this, I get a different answer. It's random. Uh, but it's right around 14.3, 14.4, 14.5, somewhere in there. That's a Monte Carlo simulation. That matches up with my calculations. My calculation said 14%. Monte Carlo simulation said 14.3, 14.4, 14.3, somewhere in there. That's the beauty of the normal approximation. Here, I had to roll the dice 100,000 times to get that number. With the normal approximation, I could calculate it. And it's not exact, but it's pretty darn close. And the more dice you add, the closer it is to normal distribution, the more accurate that is. I'm um, here with only seven dice. I got pretty darn close. That's important in industry because if I have a product, I don't want to sample 100,000 of them. That's really, really expensive. If I know the mean, know the standard deviation, I can calculate the probability. So that's a normal distribution. A normal distribution assumes you know the mean and you know the standard deviation. If you don't know the mean and standard deviation, you can estimate it from the data. But in that case, you wind up with something very similar to normal distribution, but it's called a t-distribution. It's similar, but I'm being a little bit cautious to take the sample size into account. So, for example, if I want to find what is what happens with if I roll six or ten six-sided dice, cast a level ten fireball. Again, what I can do is I roll ten dice, ten six-sided dice, add them all up repeat six times. So when I do that, this is the the result of my six level 10 fireballs. And every time I do it, I get a different answer. It's random. Suppose I get this answer. I can tell you what the distribution looks like. Again, it's going to look like a normal distribution with the mean standard deviation. Take the data, find the mean. Take the data, find the standard deviation. It says the mean will be right around 36.6, and the spread, one standard deviation, is about 3.3. And just for fun, I can plot it. This is a standard normal curve, uh, shifted by the standard deviation, or scaled by the standard deviation, shifted by the mean, and that's roughly the probability density function for a level 10 fireball. I usually do damage between about 27 and about 44. I can calculate the 90% confidence interval. If I have a sample size of 6, meaning 5 degrees of freedom, so this number is 5, I want 5% tails, find the t-score. Okay, for a normal distribution, it was 1.6. A t-distribution is 2.0. Um, 
The t-distribution takes sample size into account. As sample size goes to infinity, it converges to a normal distribution. But with only a sample size of 6, I'm going to be a little bit cautious, so this number is a little bit bigger. So the 90% confidence interval will be the mean plus or minus 2.015 standard deviations, which means that it's going to be between 29 and 43, you know, this range. Probability of doing at least 45 damage is just like the normal distribution. How far is 45 from the mean, or 44.5 from the mean, in terms of standard deviation? Is 2.3 standard deviations away from a t-test or stat track? I'm 2.3 standard deviations away. I've got 5 degrees of freedom. What's the probability? Probability is 0.03. So the area over here is 0.03. 43. Area over here is 0.9657. So 96% of the time I'll do less than 45 damage. 3% of the time I'll do 45 or more. I could repeat doing a Monte Carlo simulation. Again, with the Monte Carlo simulation, I roll the dice 100,000 times and check how many times I was bigger than 45. My probability is how many times I did that over how many times I, tr I rolled the dice. So there's 3.9%, 3.89, 3.85, 3.99, 3.94. That's what a Monte Carlo tells me. That's actually pretty close to the right number. The normal approximation is a little bit off, 3.87, which is actually really close. The important part about this is I only rolled the dice six times to get this number. I rolled the dice 100,000 times, or in this case, a million times, to get that number. It's much cheaper in industry to roll the dice six times to do six samples than to do a million. That's what statistics let you do. With just a very small sample number, I can tell you quite a bit about the, the distribution of the device or your product. Uh, one thing to you know, kind of hammer in, a sample size of 1 is meaningless. If you have a sample size of 1 that shows up as a standard deviation of infinity or 0 degrees of freedom, you need at least a sample size of 2. If I have a sample size of 2, I can find the mean and the standard deviation. But 2 is not a big number. I've got to be really cautious. If you look at the t-table, there's a big drop-off between 2 and 3, 3 and 4, then kind of diminishing returns. If I'm able to get 5 or 6 samples, I'm pretty happy. I don't need thousands. 5 and 6 does pretty good. The other thing to note is when I give confidence interval, uh, like this, I have to give an interval. If I were to say, what's the probability that the die roll, oh, this is continuous. What's the probability the die roll will be like 14.6? Answer is 0. I, I can't have where the error of a point is 0. I've got to give an interval. I could say what's the probability that I'm between 14.5 and 15.5. That's an interval I can tell you that, that area or that probability. Area of a point is going to be 0. And the last thing to note is 100% certainty is nonsense. 100% certainty says the standard deviation, I've got to go in infinity standard deviations left and right. For probability of 1, the sum of the die roll is somewhere between minus infinity and plus infinity. It's not useful. To be useful, probability has got to be less than 1. So that's number 12. Uh, again, you can actually get a major, a master's, PhD in statistics. We've got a whole course on statistics you're going to take. This is just a very brief overview. But anytime you're dealing with randomness, which is pretty much anytime you have lab data, there's a way to analyze it. That's statistics. And the two most important ones you're probably going to use are the chi squared test and the t-test. So that's homework set number 12.